Gans baie kuswater is bekend vir sy hoë konsentrasie wit haie. Hierdie trekdiere le reuse afstande af, maar word reg deur die jaar hier aangetref. Maar 2017 het een nieuwe bedreiging vir die wit haai toevlugsoord meegebring en een reeks ongekende noodlottige aanvalle op haaie het die nies opskrifte bereik. Allison Downer is die omgevingse haaideeskundige wat vir die Dyer Eiland bewaringstrust werk en Kelly Baker is deel van Marine Dynamics, een toeriste onderneming wat help om die trustse navorsing te bevonds. Saam probeer hulle om die raisel van die dooie haaie op te los. We're going into such an unknown area and even the world experts um, in, in both species are, are quite dumbfounded by the situation. It's, it's really, it's, it's the unknown. Two thousand and seventeen has been fundamentally one of the most interesting years in terms of our research at the Dyer Island Conservation Trust, and the reason I say that is because in February, at the beginning of the year, uh, a great white shark fatality occurred right here on Purley Beach. It was a two point seven meter um, animal, a female, and there was a lot of speculation as to how the, the mortality had occurred. A leidraad or the oorzaak van die vreemde dood het na vore gekom toe Kelly een dag na een onsuccesvolle seevaart op pad terug hawe toe was. I was on the shark cage diving vessel with guests and that trip as well we had no sightings. Our vessel that day on return to the harbour actually sighted two orcas off danger point here. The two males that we have been seeing more frequently over the last few years. Skielik het die legkaart stikkies vir Kelly en Allison in mekaar begin pas. What has been happening in Kansbai is quite unique. Uh, it is something that, that hasn't been documented along the South African coastline. It has been known for, for many years now that your, your orca can feed or will feed on, on shark species. However, it's a, a first for us seeing the evidence that they are feeding on, on white sharks. In the beginning of May, the first week of May, we had a five meter great white shark that washed in and followed by that was a 2.6 meter great white and then again a 4.1 meter. Die veeartse is ingeroep om uit te vind wat achter die vreemde vrekte steek en Allison en Kelly se groeiende vermoedens te bevestig. Now the autopsy revealed first and foremost when we opened up the shark on the, on the underside that she was completely minus her liver which is a major organ in the shark and it's actually the first thing that you come across when you, when you conduct an autopsy. And so Dr. Smell was quite happy then to conclude that the, the cause of death had to have been orca because they are the only uh, predator that could, could cause such, a, such an injury in the shark. So at the end of day one, on the 4th of May, um, after about a seven hour autopsy, Kelly Baker and myself and, and the DIC team were busy packing up and we got a, another phone call that a second great white shark had stranded. And so we went back to the same location that the big female had been found there the morning before. And this time it was a smaller white shark, but very much with the same injuries. Kelly kon die mannetje identificeer as a hai wat sy van tevore by hulle hokduikboot gesien het. En het was redelijk duidelijk vanuit die nadoodse onderzoek dat hier die hai ook dier een moordvis doodgemaak is. Sy lever het ontbreek, maar ook sy testicles en hart en groot dele van sy spiere is aan weerskante van sy lijf verweider. Interestingly, this male specimen also had um, distinctive raker marks, which were definitive orca tooth impressions. En die moordvis aanvallen het nie vir die hai bevolking ongesiens voorbij gegaan nie. Hulle het reageer dier uit hierdie deel van die see waar hulle gewoonlik in groot getalle voorkom pad te gee. Subsequently after this suite of mortalities, it kind of threw the whole vision of our ecosystem here in the Greater Dyer Island area into um, an uncertain paradigm. In that we're now entering a field of the unknown. We have never encountered particularly in my 10 year history of, of being on site as a biologist monitoring the white sharks, we have never encountered such a, a predation pressure event. We've never experienced it where white sharks flee the area as a result of a natural predator. We're a little unsure exactly what 
uh, initiates this flight response. Uh, many have suggested that it could possibly be the scent of a, a decaying white shark in the surrounding waters that uh, forewarns these animals to, to move or not enter the area. Uh, other theories have also been that the white sharks pick up on the communications of, of the orca. So they can pick up on the vibrations as the orcas are, are, are communicating. A klein experimentje het die wetenskapelike se vermoedens bevestig dat die withaie ten spuite van die ryk voorraad robbe in hierdie water wel uit die omgeving gevlug het. We are currently anchored on the southwestern reef of Dyer Island and this area is uh, known as the drop zone. So we've positioned ourselves in prime shark seal hunting territory and we have a bait line in position. Uh, this time of the year, we're now in July, this would be considered pretty much the best time of year to get a white shark encounter because the seals naturally transit out from the island using this corridor and it's actually a very um, known hotspot to, to, to get sharks intercepting the seals as they transit or predating on them. So on a normal day, we would expect to get here and anchor, put a bait line in, use a little bit of chum in order to attract a shark to the boat, and we would see upwards of multiple sharks, 10, 12 or so, even on a trip. Um, however, we've been sat here for almost two hours now, and there's been absolutely nothing. Alhoewel die onlangse gebeuren baie verskillende reacties, verskye theorieën en selfs nog meer vraag ontlok het, is dit ongetwijfeld een unieke en merkwaardige marine activiteit wat ons hier sien gebeur. Of the four great white shark mortalities, the one notable thing in each individual was they were completely minus their liver. Why are they minus their liver? What is it about the liver that the orca specifically wants to target them for? Allison verduidelik dat wit haie baie groot levers het, wat tot 80 kilogram kan weeg. Die lever is rijk aan een verbinding wat squaleen genoem word, wat hulle baie voedingsrijk en aanlokkelijk vir die moordvisse maak. Dit is echter nog nie sonder twyfel vastgestel, precies hoe die moordvisse hulle aanvalle met sulke chirurgische akkuraatheid uitvoer nie. We know very little about how white sharks are manipulated into this position to be killed by orcas. There's many theories out there that perhaps these animals are, are, are stunned first before the, the uh, livers are taken. Dit lyk asof die moordvisse van onder die haie af na hulle toe aankom en hulle verlam. Hulle bijt blijkbaar dan die haai en vreet die lever. Wat is die implicaties dan vir die gans baie daier eiland ekostelsel en hoe ons dit verstaan? Now as much as white sharks are generally the top predator here, they kind of share that tropic position with the orca and we need to look a little bit deeper into the story. We need to realize, of course, that, for example, the Cape Fur seal numbers may be expanding. And so is the white shark curbing as much of the seals as it should be from its top down role? Or is it quite right that another, another predator needs to come in and, and help? We, we, re we really don't know. We as man interfere extensively with the oceans. We deplete its resources. We, we cause environmental degradation, we develop the coastlines, we build, we, we impact, we impact, we impact. And so this is a natural um, phenomenon. And really as, as mankind, we, we do need to be mindful of that and let nature just run its course. And certainly my opinion is that we don't interfere with the two orcas. Um, it would be completely wrong to, to try and remove them or to even think about going down that line. It's, it's all the natural ba balance of our, of our ocean ecosystem. It's all the natural ecology of the area.